She better duck. This is a Marlin 35 caliber lever action sporting rifle. And they actually called it a sporting in that it has a smaller magazine for the bullets to be stored in that come in from to be levered into the chamber to make it a little lighter gun. And I've watched a lot of YouTube videos that are talking this gun being a, a brush gun, but I don't think the bullets are necessarily good at going through the brush. But it is a brush gun in the respect that it's small and it's light. And this is a gun you could be carrying around through that brush, you know, where you're ducking and weaving your way through branches and, and brush and take elders and all that. This gun was given to me via my brother from my step-grandfather. I don't think he ever shot a deer with it. But he hunted in the Pembine, Wisconsin area with it. And I think he might have bought it new, but I'm not certain of that. It does have an H in its serial number here. You can see the H there. That is 1951. Old gun. It's a gun that has the, the waffle top here. That waffle top, I think, was meant for you wouldn't get any glare from the sun as you're aiming up the sights. This particular one has a William sight on it, so he must have had that installed. But I had a, a gunsmith take out the center of the peep sight, so I have a larger sight picture. Um, the lever is unbelievably smooth. There is no hitch in it anywhere. Just beautiful. I got it out now because I'm cleaning it and I'm putting it away for the winter. But I want to show you there are two safety mechanisms on this gun. One is that is not very well known and I've watched a lot of videos. I only had one fella talk about it. Having that lever a little bit separated from the stock, that is a safety mechanism from pulling the trigger. Right now the trigger won't pull. See that? And it's really nice as you're walking through the you know, as you're out hunting and you see a deer, it's kind of quiet. It releases the safety and now you can fire without having to pull the hammer back. Faster and quieter. So that's really neat. And of course the other one that everybody knows about is half cock. That's half cock. And then if you want to cock it, you get the noise and that's what scares the deer. <laughs> so I don't know if that's why they made this lever action safety mechanism or not, but you see it doesn't fire. Now it does. So I don't think there's anything else I can talk about other than I want to clean it. And I'm using isopropyl to clean it out with. I only fired it twice in practice. I didn't fire at a deer this year. I have shot two deer with it though since I took it out of the safe. I actually had it in the safe and lost track of it for a lot of years and then I found it and I used it. The first year I used it I shot two deer. I thought boy this is a lucky gun. But I haven't shot a deer since. This is how I clean out the barrel. It actually dries it out as well. And then I just use, I got some rem oil here that I used to oil it up with. I only, since I only fired it twice, I'm not going to find much in it, I'm sure. And that's it. That's what I'm going to do. Clean it up, put it away, and try again next year. I don't really need to show you how to clean this, I'm sure. Most of you know all of that already. But I'm here to tell you, in the old days, when things really meant something, an apprentice had to go through 10,000 hours of experience before he was considered a master. And I would think it's kind of the same thing, maybe not 10,000 hours, but it should take hours and hours and hours of experience to learn how to handle um, and maintain guns. And I can tell you that I probably have an hour. So this is just a simple cleaning I'm going to do of the, of the inside of the barrel and, and the outside uh, on the metal parts. So, all right. So here are the deer that I shot. Thanks for watching. What you're looking at here is my 2014 opening day doe harvest for the Michigan rifle season. And I shot that with Grandpa's 35 caliber Remington lever action. And then... This is the last day deer that I shot. The last minute, and it was a buck. 
And there's a little bit of a story to tell here. One is, is I shot it with the same gun that I shot the doe. So this is the first year I really seriously used my grandpa's gun since it was given to me. And I'd say that that gun is good luck. And another story is, is I shot that buck standing in the very same spot that the doe was standing. <laughs> so uh, think of that. The odds are all that happening. And then, the last weekend of the season, I forgot my video camera. And, of course, you know, I remembered that I forgot it when I got maybe 45 minutes from the house, and I could have turned around, but I never thought I was going to shoot a deer, man. I haven't even been putting any bucks on my camera. So uh, I came up here not expecting to get a deer, and I was in the stand not expecting maybe to see a couple does, you know, and... and uh, and you know, just see some deer. But I was listening to the Packer game on a stand, and uh, this thing come walking in. <laughs> it was like unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. And uh, the bullet went in the same spot, came out the same spot as the doe. And what a storybook ending to the 24, 2014 Michigan rifle deer season. That's the biggest buck I've ever taken on my property here. All right. Large. It's okay. I'm gonna go get the uh, sled. Oh, the bull came out right here. That was the other side of her. So, uh, I'll show you when I got it in the pole. Higher to the neck, that's why it dropped. There she is. Get a little better view of the exit hole now. I didn't really notice that last night. That's why she dropped. Nice clean shot. That's how you like it. And a couple more things, including this white dot on the stock, which has no function other than to capture your attention when looking at the racks full of guns where they are selling them. That is a marketing tool right there. And the other is, the barrel has an old-fashioned rifling. It's called Ballard Rifling. I get this thing here. Uh, you probably can't see it. I can see it's just a little bit of it. It's just an old fashioned, it's a, it's a wider rifling in the barrel. Which I find very interesting. How can you tell if the newer micro rifling is any better than the battle rifle? 
And then it's probably another sales gimmick. Yeah. Hey. Thanks for watching.